story one. In 2021, fresh out of college, I moved to a new state for a job. Facing high rent, the Scots, family friends of my parents, offered me their guest house for a mere dollar three hundred a month. Little did I know, this seemingly sweet deal would lead to a year of turmoil. The Scots, longtime friends and business partners of my parents, had three kids. As soon as I settled in, the Scots became excessively involved in my personal life, particularly my relationship. The situation took a dark turn as they fabricated scenarios to my parents, accusing me of promiscuity, rarely being home, and even planning to secretly move in with my boyfriend. Their disdain for my boyfriend was palpable, treating him with passive aggression, condescension, and even making derogatory comments about him being adopted. The interference escalated with family meetings where they labeled me as a poor influence on their teenage daughter, criticizing my boyfriend, whom they had met only three times. And I have to add, my BF and I don't drink or smoke and both have careers. My BF is a perfectly good man and was always respectful to them despite their poor treatment. The dad of the Scott family went to the extent of sharing his marriage problems and lack of a sex life, blurring the boundaries of landlord tenants slash inappropriate relationships. The breaking point came when the fridge in the guesthouse broke, and they insisted I foot the bill for a $1.900 replacement. Their influence over my parents was significant, as my parents rarely had my back and sided with the Scots, constantly belittling my boyfriend without reason. By the end of 2022, I decided to move out with some girlfriends of mine, leaving without saying goodbye to avoid further confrontation. Fast forward to the summer of 2023, my boyfriend and I were living together in a new state, and he proposed. To my surprise, when he asked my parents for their blessings, they were supportive and enthusiastic. My parents were even flown out to witness our engagement. As we delved into wedding planning in the fall of 2023, my fiancé's parents generously offered to finance the wedding. Strangely, my mother declined involvement in the planning, claiming she hated it. Despite repeated invitations from myself and my future mother-in-law, she insisted we handle everything on our own. She hated it. Despite repeated invitations from myself and my future mother-in-law, she insisted we handle everything on our own, a departure from the typical involvement of the mother of the bride. My mill did fly my mom out to NY for wedding dress shopping which was fun, but my mother insisted on the trip that this was all she wanted to do. Winter 2023 brought a text from my dad, urging me to invite the Scots. I respectfully declined, citing the distress it would cause me on our special day. This refusal triggered a nuclear war within the family. My parents, adamant about the Scots' inclusion, declared they wouldn't attend the wedding. My dad accused me of starting my happy life by destroying his, and my mother uninvited me to Christmas. In an attempt to salvage the situation, I apologized and tried to explain my decision. However, my parents were unreceptive, hurling insults and baseless accusations claiming my side of the family has been cancelled. My mother then flipped the script and threatened to expose details on social media of my disrespect to the family if I didn't show up for Christmas. Despite exchanging Christmas and birthday greetings via text, I've not spoken to them about the situation. The pain of their absence and the harsh words lingers as I approach my wedding day. I'm confused, I'm guilty, I'm in pain. The fallout, all because I refused to invite the Scots. Op added an edit to the original post. Edit, we are having a destination wedding and the festivities will begin three days prior to the wedding. So if caved in and invited the Scots, I would have to endure up to four days of them. I don't want to walk around the resort and turn around and have to see them and instantly get into a bad mood. Also, I am afraid if my parents decide to show up without the Scots that they will cause drama. Relevant comments. Useful Commission 76 making derogatory comments about him being adopted criticizing my boyfriend belittling my boyfriend, it seems like a perfectly reasonable decision for the boyfriend and his parents, who are the ones financing the wedding, to decline to invite these Scott people. I don't think the bride or her parents have a choice in this matter. OP. My future-in-laws don't want the Scots there, but they would be willing to bite the bullet for me because they feel terrible about my parents not attending. They're such good people, but there's no way in hell I'm going to let that happen, especially since they are doing so much for me out of the kindest of their hearts. However, this actually came up in the argument with my parents and my dad literally said, I don't have to ask your fiancé or his mother for permission to invite who I want at the wedding of my daughter. My parents say the Scots did everything out of protection. It makes me so angry. Up on what her fiancé thinks of the situation. My fiancé has been incredibly supportive. 
Most of all he just feels terrible for me and feels that I have been put in a lose-lose situation by my parents. Either I invite the Scots and be absolutely miserable at our wedding, or I don't invite them and my own parents opt to not attend. He also doesn't want the Scots to attend, but he would be willing to bite the bullet if I was desperate for my parents to come. However, like many comments below, I don't want to start my life with an ultimatum from my parents. If I cave in now, who knows what they will do in the future. I am blessed to be marrying someone who is patient, caring, and supportive. Anyak thinks the parents want the Scots there. The Scots invest money into my dad's small business, and they split ownership 50 to 50. In the initial text from my parents, my dad said that he has been losing sleep for months, thinking about how he was going to tell the Scots they're not invited to my wedding. I think my dad is afraid that if he doesn't invite them, the Scots will get pissed and pull out. This is speculation, but if this is the case, then some people are right, and this is like a blackmail thing. But I don't want to feel guilty. Why do I have to invite people who give me a visceral reaction of anxiety and stress just because my dad is afraid to tell them no? Update 1. Context from my original post, at 24 female, I find myself in a heartbreaking situation. My parents won't be at my wedding. The reason? I refuse to invite their friends. Update, I woke up this morning to a bunch of texts from my mother. She demanded that I end my engagement, cancel the wedding, quit my job, and move back to their home. She started saying things like, I know you're unhappy. It's okay. You tried. Now it's time to come home. You have some maturing you need to do. This irks me so much. My parents literally gave their blessings for my marriage six months ago. Now they want me to change my entire life because they're mad they didn't get their way. I responded and said, this is my life. And if they don't want to respect my decisions, that's on them. But I am in utter shock. I am financially independent of my family. I have a great job, loving partner. How do parents come up with this shit? Update 2. Three months have passed since my parents declined attending my wedding. Initially, I found peace and acceptance, looking forward to celebrating with those who would be present and knowing my parents wouldn't be there to ruin it. However, a text from my younger brother 19 male shattered that peace, revealing that our parents threatened to kick him out of the house and abandon him financially if he attends my wedding. This utterly crushed me. I am so close with my brothers and I love them dearly. I have three brothers aged 19, 22, and 27. While my older brother lives independently, my two younger siblings still live with our parents. Despite my parents' decision to not come to the wedding, I told my brothers how badly I wanted them to attend, assuring them of my support. After their shared support, I booked their travel, optimistic about their participation. I was naive to believe our parents would accept this decision. Their subsequent outburst targeted my brothers, leveraging financial threats to dissuade them from attending, claiming they are betraying the family by supporting me. I offered to financially assist my brothers if they still want to attend knowing they'd get kicked out, but I realized the difficulty of abandoning familiarity. In response to this outburst, my brothers called me and proposed an intervention, aiming to address broader familial issues, aka the bigger picture of my parents being abusive. I tried my best to explain this was a bad idea, I pleaded. Despite my reservations, I supported them via phone call. I felt I was bound by sibling loyalty. Yesterday's call confirmed my fears. Amidst vile accusations, I endured personal attacks, ranging from insults against my fiancé to baseless critiques of our life choices. My father's tirade, marked by verbal abuse, culminated in a cruel dismissal of my feelings. Here are a few notes I took during the two-hour intervention. 1. My fiancé is not an intellectual because he likes to snowboard and doesn't know how to have intellectual conversations. 2. My fiancé doesn't have royal or noble blood and therefore cannot have intelligent children. 3. It was rude for my fiancé to not bring flowers or wine when he flew from another state for the day to ask for my hand in marriage. 4. My decision to change my job and move to a new state with my fiancé is a manipulation tactic. 5. My dad said calling people names and insults is the right thing to do when you're mad. 6. My dad said my decision to change my career path is stupid, and I am cutting him out of his life. 7. I think my fiancé's job as a salesman makes him a loser. 8. My parents are mad I never offered to invite my uncle that I haven't seen in 13 years who lives in Russia. Literal WTF moment for me. 9. My dad says my relationship is wrong, and he's not happy about it. Says it would be smart to break up. 10. 
My dad says he regrets not punching my fiancé in the face when he asked for his blessings and says it will haunt him for the rest of his life that he didn't punch him. Says the only reason he gave his blessings was to not hurt my feelings. 11. Says my fiancé's parents are mean for not responding to their texts. 12. Called my fiancé's mom a bitch. 13. Said everyone at my engagement party is unintellectual and a redneck, and that they were shocked at the crowd I've decided to live around. 14. The last minute of the call consisted of my dad screaming at the top of his lungs that I am stupid, an idiot, dumb, and a bitch. I started hysterically crying at this point. I felt like a little girl again. 15. He called me a liar when I explained all the horrible things his friends did to me and why I didn't want to invite them to the wedding. He even called me a liar when I explained that his friend 70 meters would try to talk about his sex life with me. 16. Crying I explained to my dad, I just wish you cared about my feelings too because I'm also really hurt and just want you to understand my perspective. He said. We the fuck should I care about your feelings? You don't respect me, my friends, or my values. Fuck your feelings, you stupid bitch. I ended the call right there. After the call my brothers said they will still be attending my wedding because this has become an issue of standing up to my father's unacceptable behavior. Despite my brother's attempts at defense, we were outmatched by our father's narcissism. Enduring the call was agonizing, yet crucial for my siblings to witness his true nature. Gaslit and invalidated, I feel so dehumanized. I never thought I would someday block my parents. Today marks day one of going no contact. Story 2. My sister and I stopped speaking after her child-free wedding and ghost her. Now she wants to attend mine and family's side with her. Around the time my sister got married I had a lot going on. I was divorcing, had two kids under two, and me attending her wedding would require an overnight trip, which I was prepared to do, until I found out with less than a week to go that it was child-free. I called her and said I couldn't make it. She didn't take it well. We both said shit we shouldn't have, and we both apologized. But when we made up, she asked if I could come to the wedding now, and I said no as the circumstances hadn't changed, at which point the argument started up all over again. The day of the wedding she sent me a series of messages about how she wanted me there, and she needed some time before we talked next, so I needed to wait for her to contact me. That was three years ago, and we still haven't spoken. I got engaged two months ago, and we told my family a month ago. One of my parents told my sister, who contacted me, and I ignored her because in the last three years I've moved on. I'm happy she had her wedding her way, but she knew it would cause issues for me, which is why she only told me last minute. She said some things about my kids and me that I can't forgive, and if not for me getting engaged, she might have never reached out to me again as it's been nearly three years. So clearly my ongoing presence in her life is not a big deal to her. I've explained my feelings to my family, but they want me to meet with her, hear her out, and invite her to the wedding. I asked what happens if I don't do that, and their responses have ranged from being mildly put out to not going in solidarity. I have asked where this response was when I couldn't go to her wedding, and they've said it's different because I had an invitation while she doesn't. I don't want to get into a debate about me attending her wedding, or her coming to mine. I just want some advice on how to address this whole issue with my family in regards to them choosing sides, as I would like them to be at my wedding. But I'm still not inviting my sister. Update. I was not planning on updating, and I'm sorry it's been so long, but I felt an update was warranted. I contacted the relatives who have been harassing me about inviting my sister to my wedding. I said in short that I don't want to talk about my sister anymore. That we had our issues way back when and the resolution, if you can call it that, was no contact. I intend to continue not speaking to her because of how she acted back then and shared part of the truth, admitting that when we had that argument she insulted my kids due to the circumstances of my split with their father. I included a couple of quotes from my argument with my sister that I felt comfortable sharing, specifically some about my children. A few people apologized after that, and I thought things were resolved, until my sister put her little woe as me act back on, talking about how mean I was to her on her special day and saying I was punishing her and she somehow managed to turn the tide back around and into her favor. The messages then began trickling in, and in the last three weeks, all but two of my relatives have said they are not attending my wedding in solidarity with my sister. I haven't even sent out invites yet, so to get this many negative RSVPS in advance probably belongs in the record books. My family made up the overwhelming majority of the guest list, which was pretty small to begin with, so now we only have less than 20 people left on said list, including kids, and no one else to invite, and that's assuming the remaining guests can all come. 
My fiancé and I are now considering eloping, which sucks because we didn't want to do that, but we no longer have enough guests to warrant an actual wedding as most wedding services are designed for a couple hundred people so the cost per guest is skyrocketed. And to just deliver that final blow, I spoke to my sister in person, and after once again insulting me and my kids, she added that I should let her know the date for my wedding so she can plan a party, and possibly a vow renewal, for the same day. This was probably only said to upset me in the moment, but I wouldn't put it past her to actually do this either. All in all, I'm glad I no longer speak to my sister, I just wish she'd left my life quietly and not kicking and screaming. If you've made it to this point, you're a beast.